do you believe that Jesus Christ came to the earth? I'm unconvinced. I think okay. most likely there was a character. We don't have any contemporary sources for his existence. Even if I grant that there was a person on the earth that was named Jesus that existed about 2,000 years ago, I don't agree with the claim that he was a son of God or the Messiah. It seems like there's a lot of evidence today that Jesus Christ did exist. What, I think what, it, like, for example, like what? Let's get on with the show. Dude, this Gabriel guy, you were a psychopath, dude. I don't know who you are. I've never met you. You're watching my show. I'm not taking my time out of my day. I thought you had more important things to do. Um, message me personally. Yeah, man, I'm easy to find. You want to come fight? You want to come get 17 plus one? You know, if you know what that means. Florida's a stand your ground state, buddy. So you're more than welcome to come say hi anytime. All right, I'm going to bring Michael up on the stage. Michael, you can, I mean, again, you can have your video off if you want. Um, you're off mute. So, Michael, you there? You on? Yes, I'm on. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir, man. What do you want to talk about? Um, well, first of all, I'm a believer because that's okay. who you're looking to chat with. So thank you sure. for taking my call. That's very totally. mature. Uh, also, I liked your presentation and your logical approach to everything. I think that was very well thought out. I have Thanks. a couple of quick questions for you if you don't object too vehemently. Sure. Do you believe that Jesus Christ came to the earth? Um, I'm unconvinced. I think okay. most likely there was a character that went by something similar to Jesus or Jeshua or Joshua, and then um, it kind of became this legend that spiraled out of out of control. I mean, we don't have uh, any contemporary sources for his existence. Um, sure. I mean, so so even if he even if he did, I'll grant this. Even if I grant that there was a person on the earth that was named Jesus that existed about two thousand years ago, sure. I, I don't I don't agree with the claim that he was a son of God or the Messiah. So I mean, for the sake of the argument, I'll say yes. But go on. So. Theoretically, what I think you're saying is that there might have been a person named Jesus or Jesus Christ, but you don't believe what he said, at least what the scriptures say he said. I think yeah, that's I'm what unconvinced. you're convinced. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess the I guess if you want to prove something in reality, it seems like the studies that I've looked at, and I'm not saying I've seen them all, that it's if anyone ever existed, it was him. So that, I think that's hard to debate. Do you agree with that or disagree? Well, I don't know what studies or data you're talking about. That's a good point. Like what what accounts exactly? Like, are you are you are you mentioning? I mean, well, for example, it seems like when we try to verify if someone existed in the past, say like George Washington. It seems like there's a lot of evidence today that Jesus Christ did exist. What, I think what, it, like, for example, like what? Well, you know, that's a brilliant question. But no, no, I'm, not, I'm not trying to do a gotcha here. No, I'm no, just saying, no, like, I don't feel that at all. What is it? It seems like, from what I understand, there's a lot of people, maybe tens of millions of people that think they have a relationship with God or Jesus Christ, and they seem to believe it experientially. In other words, they seem like they've had that kind of experience. And the reason I'm going down this line is because you've stated that you don't believe the Bible is a res uh, res uh, reasonable source of truth or accuracy. So I have to go to the experiential side of the argument. Okay. But I mean what that is the idea that if 99.99 percent of people in the world believe that the moon was made of cheese does that make it made of cheese i think what, the, see, that's a, what we're doing here that's a logical fallacy called it's sure. called a uh, ad populum so just because sure. a lot of people believe something and a lot of people think that they have a relationship with a supernatural being does nothing to prove its veracity or the fact that it's true so I think what we're saying is that there's a belief compared to uh, what they claim is an actual experience. How do you so separate like that, the two? What would be I an think, example of an experience? 
let's say that someone believes in UFOs, for example. Well, I don't, but there was a military officer that claimed he saw a Tic Tac with four of his fellow fighter pilots, and they seem to have got some data, some recordings, and they all seem lucid and believable gentlemen. So I think the difference between would be belief is someone who believed it says, well, I believe it, but I've never seen it. And other people might have said, I believe it, and I've seen something that appears to be from an alien nature. So an experiential versus just a common household belief. But again, in what way is it so is it about the person that is the type of person that is quote unquote again, how does that person know if you can attribute anything to that, right? Just be in what way does somebody make the determination that if they see something, it's supernatural versus natural? I guess they have to make up their own mind, right? Right. And that's fine, point. but yeah. that's still a belief, right? And so if it all comes down to the belief and it's a personal belief, how does that in any way do anything for, how does that in any way help us figure out if it's true and how it's true and if it's true? Maybe you can give me an example of something that you can't see, but we believe exists. Besides well, electricity. I mean, you, there's a lot of it. You can't see the wind, but I mean, we can feel it and we can measure it. I mean, and it's the absence of seeing something isn't necessarily the fact that it doesn't exist. I mean, that's like, have you ever seen a million dollars? No, it doesn't, that's not because we can make logical and rational inferences on things, but we can, we can measure all of those things. We can measure things we can't see. We can measure the wind, for example. Um, but it's it's but really I'm following you on there, but let me let me put it this way. Okay. If there was a God that was real and invisible, how is he going to communicate his existence? I would think an omnipotent God that predetermines everything a human being or human beings ever do, that knows every outcome of every situation, who designed the entire world or universe that we live in, would do exactly what it would take to convince me that he exists, and he wouldn't leave it up to me to try and figure that out. But if you're looking for what evidence may be sufficient, it'd be something that I could test, something that I could test repeatedly, and something that it was anything that could be recorded as empirical evidence that can be done repeatedly over time with the same result. So I want to give you a couple of examples, but I'm not trying to be aggressive I or know. put you on the spot. Go ahead. So let's say that there is a real God, which I believe there is, and you, someone's looking for some proof. Let's say that Moses had a burning bush, for example. Is that a proof? Not because bushes burn, but because bushes, this particular bush burned and continued to burn longer than possible. But there's no evidence that shows that that actually happened, right? There's no record outside of the Bible, which tells you that this is the truth and the word of God. That's where you start to get into circular arguments. So, I mean, again, let's say a, str a, a strike of lightning hit a bush and it burned for 10 hours. I still don't see that as reason to believe that there's a God. I, I think that'd be a bad example. I think sure, it's, sure. I think that would be a, a attempt that would be, again, if you, you want to make your truth known, why rely on symbolism and allegory instead of just being able to communicate directly? Okay. Let me try this angle. What would it take for you to believe there's a true and living God? Which one? The, I'm, I'm referring to the God and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. What would it take? Like I said, it would take empirical, repeatable evidence that would hold up via the scientific method, which is how we go about determining whether anything is true or not. That but seems any reasonable. Evidence, Could you give me an example of that kind of evidence? Well, you're trying to prove a negative here. So it's, I mean, I can run, I mean, like, here's evidence, question. here's evidence, sure. right? If I take this piece of electrical tape and I let go of it, I can test this a hundred times in a row. And I know for a fact that it will drop and hit my desk. I can do that a million times in a row and that will always happen. 
So I have repeated tested empirical evidence that if I take this and drop it, it will land on the desk. And I don't take that on faith. I take that on reasonable expectation. Sure. Just like when I go and flip the light switch on when I go into my house, I have a reasonable expectation based on thousands of other lights that I flicked on in my past in my life that that light will come on. But that's something so, that you can test true. over and over, and that is always going to be true. I agree that I agree with that, and I like your logic. I have utmost respect respect for common sense and logic. So thank you for that. Now sure. we're we're talking about an invisible God who allegedly made the universe. If he was here now, listening to our conversation, and you could talk to him, what would you tell him that you would need to believe in him? Well, if I was talking to him, I would sort of have to be forced to believe that he exists. If we're already having a conversation, true, that'd be great. If let's if, pretend if, that if he wanted to appear in my bedroom right, right now, and and, and sure. the skies opened up, and he magically appeared and says, "Hey, dude, God here, stop talking shit about me on your podcast." That that'd be pretty convincing. Okay, but I still don't know if that would be what it take. I probably would think I need to have I would, I'm having a schizophrenic episode, and I needed to go have my you know get a cat scan done. Because sure, why sure. me of all people? Why not just do it for? I mean, so again, like, I, what? It, typically, with with the way things way these go, it's I kind of provided this as far as like what I would assume is evidence. If I'm talking to the guy, I would already assume like, okay, that would make me more inclined. But I'm open to having my mind changed. But really, my position is the arguments for a God, specifically Yahweh or the Christian God, there's not sure. a single one of them that holds water or that holds up to any sort of logical or rational scrutiny. And I'm right. not even sitting here saying, I, 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 pref I, do, I do think of myself as more of a Gnostic atheist. Sure. People think there's a big difference. You think that you could either atheist or agnostic, and that's not true. Gnostic and agnosticism only deals with what we know and theism or atheism deals with what we believe so i can say i don't believe and i think that he doesn't exist that would be a gnostic g-n-o-s-t-i-c gnostic atheist you could be an agnostic atheist who says i don't believe but i'm not willing to say that i don't think he exists that's where most people take that stance because yeah. basically if you say if you say hey moff um God doesn't, your God exists. And I say, I, I don't, I'm not saying he doesn't exist, but I don't believe the claim that he does. Anyway. True. You know, we don't know, we don't know 100% of everything. We in don't the know for sure, but my right. opinion is that we know enough about the way the world actually works. And we know enough about how contradictory the Bible is to actual world events that I think we can say with some pretty good certainty that it was not written by a God. And I don't think that there's a reason to think that a God does exist. So I, I am more a strong, they call it strong atheism or Gnostic atheism. I don't believe, and I think there's enough presented before us to sit here and say that a God does not exist. Sure. sure. Well, I think you have common sense and I think that's a mature and reasonable stance. And um, I'm going to have to look into this area that you've discussed as your personal belief system. And, and if I can poke a hole in it, that's fine. And if I can't, please, you know, more power to you. Hey, man. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> all. I mean, that's all you want to say. Yeah, I will say uh, I will. When you come back to the recording, I'll post a comment with uh, that video. I talked about the Sam Harris video. You know, sure. yeah, dude, you're welcome to call in any time. I wanted to do this specifically today. I'm always willing to have a conversation. Again, like we've had a very reasonable and respectful discussion. Um, oh, sure. You know, I don't, I don't like to ban people from my chat, but I've got a guy that's threatening me, and I, that's never going to happen. Um, so, you know, if he wants to come find out where I live and say hello, like more than happy to do that. But anyway, Michael, it's, it's been a pleasure, man. If you have something you want to, if you could go back and you do some reading and do some research and you want to learn more about this stuff, um, yeah, man, more than more than happy to continue to have this conversation as long as you want to. Hey, and I appreciate your time and your effort to uh, look at uh, possibilities in the world. Totally. Yeah, man. Right Take on. care, buddy. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. you as well. All right, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed that clip. If you want to check out the full-length podcast episode, you can find that right over here. Also, make sure you visit my website over here where you'll find my supplements, the opportunity to book me privately one-on-one -on -one for coaching, and most importantly, my new School of Unplugging, which you'll find on the Courses tab. Newer to the channel? Hit subscribe.